So I guess I'll get started here. So this talk is about Ubuntu 1904, um, which is codenamed the Disco Dingo. Um, it is, this talk is going to preview, just have a high level overview of all the um, features of Ubuntu and the Ubuntu flavors in this upcoming release. Um, if you have any questions at the end, um, I'll take questions. And so we begin. So my name is Simon Quigley. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I'm the Ubuntu release manager and team lead. Um, I'm also a member of the Kubuntu Council, membership board, developer membership board, and I'm a core developer for the project. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, what's this dingo, and why is it disco? <laughs> So Mark Shuttleworth is the CEO of Canonical and the project lead for the Ubuntu, uh, for Ubuntu, and he names all the Ubuntu releases ever since the beginning. So he uses a, a, um, a funky fairy naming system. So where you have an adjective and an animal. So for example, 1804 was the Bionic Beaver, 1810 was Cosmic Cuttlefish, and, and 1904 is the Disco Dingo. So that's a little, that's a dingo right there. It gets Australian. So this is an overview of Ubuntu and its flavors because Flavors are a big part of the community, at least in my opinion, working on a flavor. Um, so we have several Ubuntu flavors here. We have Kubuntu with KDE Plasma, um, you probably recognize the name KDE. Um, Zubuntu with XFCE, Ubuntu Studio with, that has multimedia applications on top. Um, Lubuntu, which has, L which has LXQ, formerly LXDE, um, that I'm personally working on. Ubuntu Chillin, um, that's how it's pronounced for Chinese users. Ubuntu Mate. Um, Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> and then um, Ubuntu Budgie. So here, um, raise your hand if you're uh, involved in a flavor back there, because I know there's a few. So there's Valerie from Kubuntu, Martin from Ubuntu Mate, and Dustin from Ubuntu Budgie. So if at any point when I'm going over your flavors, if you have anything that you want to say, go ahead and interrupt me. Um, Eric will be here, but he thought it was in 201. <laughs> He'll get here eventually, but he's, yeah. he's, um, he does Ubuntu Studio stuff. He has the whole setup downstairs at the booth. Um, so Ubuntu 1904, it's shipped with um, GNOME 332. Um, so there's a screenshot of, of that right there with the nice wallpaper. Um, so the Ubuntu switched to something, it was formerly called the Community Theme, but now it's called Yaru. And it's a, um, an effort to revamp the icon set. So now, Ubuntu, for the longest time, had the same icon set. And now with this, um, with this new Yaru theme, it just gives a modern, um, modern spin on it, I guess. Um, so that gains support for a lot more applications. Um, and then there's more uh, granular application permission controls in terms of what the application can access, um, as well as new versions of Firefox and other applications. I'll cover common stuff, um, common packages for all the flavors um, at the end of it. Uh, is that, okay. Um, so Kubuntu, Kubuntu got KDE Plasma 5.15.4, KDE Frameworks 5.56, and KDE Applications 18.12. So Plasma is the core Plasma um, desktop, I guess. So it's the, the wallpaper, the, the core applications like panel. Frameworks is the underlying libraries, I guess, um, that comprise KDE, um, that, that everything is basically layered on top of that. Since it's an extension of Qt. And then there's KDE Applications, so things like uh, Krita, um, Trying to name what? What's some Kate other? Kate Live. There's, there's, there's so many KDE applications. It's hard to name them all. So that's, you know, um, so with that release, with those releases, um, comes with general stability improvements just throughout the desktop, for applications such as Disco the Discover Software Center, which is part of Plasma. Um, so the whole desktop got new features and updates within this cycle. Um, it was just a cycle where we updated things to the news release. Zubuntu. So GIMP is included by default again in Zubuntu. It was included by default, I believe they said 15.04. Um, more porting to GTK3, I believe. I don't know if that was the last application that was ported to GTK3, but they're very close to porting it all. Um, additional keyboard shortcuts by default, better high DPI support for some applications, and then just various updates and bug fixes. So this is a screenshot of, of Zubuntu 19.04. Then there's Ubuntu Studio, which um, Eric isn't here yet, but um, Ubuntu Studio, the best way to describe it is it's the XFCE desktop with um, multimedia applications layered on top. 
which it's sort of unique as an Ubuntu flavor because it, it doesn't solely switch the desktop environment. It has its own um, application set. And they, they recently worked on something called the Ubuntu Studio Installer, which allows you to install that application set. So things like um, Carla and other multimedia applications on any Ubuntu flavor. So like I have up there, Carla 2.0 is installed by default. They have a demo downstairs at the Ubuntu booth. And Ubuntu Studio Controls replaces um, QJack CTL for controlling um, audio. Um, so Jack, I don't know if, if you guys know what Jack is, but it's, it's a replacement for, I guess a replacement for Pulse Audios is some way to describe it. Just in time. <laughs> hey, hey. Expert is here. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at, I made that. <laughs> Did I get that right? Uh, let's see, so here's, oh, yes, uh, 2.0, yes, and yes. Cool, cool. Although replaces it is kind of a misnomer because QJack Control is a dependency on Jack, so therefore we have to keep it. Okay. It's still good for monitoring, but don't use it to start and stop Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's Ubuntu Mate. Um, so there was various improvements, such as um, the remote desktop awareness, which if you're accessing Mate um, from a, um, remotely, um, <laughs> it makes um, Ubuntu Mate beha behave a little bit differently. And there's support now for the GPD Pocket and the GPD Pocket 2, as well as, I believe, Raspberry Pi um, support. Wow. Nice. Is there anything you want, you'd like to add? Thank you. Cool. The final version of the pie. Um, well, the. Yeah. So uh, we're going to release a beta two next week. Uh, that will ruminate for a couple of weeks and then we'll release the final. How to was the best? <laughs> Checks in the post. <laughs> <laughs> So then, then there's Ubuntu Budgie, which has the Budgie Desktop 10.5, and Nautilus has been replaced with Nemo as the um, as the default file manager. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add on that? <laughs> I mean, there's everything in Firefox all now. There's uh, new theme. There's uh, you should just install it. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So common common new application sets. So the NVIDIA drivers can now be installed by default in, in Ubiquity. The Ubiquity is the Ubuntu installer, used by default on every flavor except Lubuntu, um, using enhancements in the Ubuntu driver command line tool. So basically, by default, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card enabled on your system, and you check the box that says um, install third-party drivers, if, you, if you've ever installed Ubuntu, you know what I'm talking about. And it's... Um, that will automatically install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. If you keep that unchecked, that allows um, just to install the, the, um, the free drivers, the Novo, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, so that is a new enf enhancement in Ubiquity this cycle. I just picture Linus Torvald giving NVIDIA the fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're getting, they're getting a lot better. Yes, they are. <laughs> Finally. So what um, Right. Yeah. You may not want the latest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a gamer. Rather than someone who's thinking But it does install the, the proprietary video driver either way. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, as always, your mileage may vary. <coughs> right. Yeah. So the um, Lux 2 is now the default. Um, so that's, that's used with Ubiquity because Ubiquity, the way that it works is that um, in Linux, there's the boot partition in, in, um, when you're installing Linux, of course. And Ubiquity, when installing an encrypted system, it separates out that boot partition into an unencrypted drive. And it keeps the rest of it encrypted. So the, the core files you need to boot, um, up to the points, I, I'm not exactly sure the particulars of this implementation, but um, the, the boot files are unencrypted, which makes this completely fine. However, with Calamares, the, um, the Lubuntu installer, um, we don't have um, Lux2 support because we have we install it on all in one partition instead of separating it out. Um, so Grub two actually lacks support for it. It's it's sort of a just it's it's a new um, it, it provides new security features and Lux two I believe is completely backwards compatible with Lux one. So 
Um, Qt 5.12 is the um, new LTS release for Qt. Um, 5.13 is not yet released, but 5.12 is included by default. Um, there's GTK 3.24, Linux Curl 5.0, um, Mozilla Firefox 66, VLC 3.0.6, LibreOffice 3.2.2, and Thunderbird 60. So just, say again? <laughs> Two of them. So um, each of those have indiv individual change logs. For example, the Linux kernel, I mean, it's 5.0 um, with, with Firefox and VLC as well. Um, so then the question is, what's next? So this is a little bit of an open question because 19, the t 1910 cycle just recently started. So there is, um, so I know for a fact that Qt will stay on 5.12 until 2004 is released, which is the next LTS, um, to keep support with, um, with you know, just an upstream LTS. We did the same thing in, in 18.04 with the last Qt LTS release. Um, Mate 1.22 will be default, as, as said in the release announcement. 1.22. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Lubuntu actually, in the, so we switched from the Ubiquiti installer to the Calamari's installer with the 18.10 release. Um, Calamari's is used in, I believe, Manjaro, soon in KDE Neon. It's, it's the goal that is provided universal Linux <laughs> installer. Um, so it has support for just a bunch of, of, um, a bunch of Linux distributions. Um, so well, by it's made by BSD guy, so I bet it works for BSD too. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Lubuntu will get OEM support and minimal install support in this upcoming release. Um, we just have to, our goal is by 2004 to at least get feature parity with Ubiquiti. So, to make it so that the, the experience is quicker and just more efficient than Ubiquiti, that's, that's our end goal with it. So, then the 1910 code name is, and this was recently, this recently came out, is EON. I'm not exactly sure if that's the correct pronunci pronunciation, and I don't know what, well, the definition I believe is eastward. Um, or like towards the dawn, towards the dawn something. <laughs> what? Oh, um, not an well, we don't have an animal yet. Yeah, okay. oh, e okay. animal question mark. <laughs> right. So I, you know, I, I wonder what what such an animal would be. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, well, the way the way Mark did it the last two cycles is he told the the release team what the um the, the name would be so that they can start the development of the archive, open everything up, and get everything bootstrapped. Before that, he would actually do a, a release announcement. So he would always, he would rhyme and and it was a nice announcement, but he decided to, to the last two releases to just announce the, um, the adjective so that development could start. Because in the developments for, um, for Ubuntu, we only use the adjective, except for some of the, the core files that actually define that there's an adjective and, and stuff like that. Um, but I did hear a joke that it, it we should keep it as the E animal because that's uh, that's an error. No, that's uh, it's an error. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, nineteen ten is an alpha. I'm you know I don't know if, if any of the flavors have anything that they would like to share for nineteen ten, but otherwise it's it's all in development still, and and we're still in the planning stage for nineteen ten, and it's going to be polished i guess for the 19 or for the 2004 release which will be released in april 20th or april 2020 what's up yeah so um, one of the things we're going to do in 1910 is uh, replace thunderbird with uh, english okay does mark, does mark shuttleworth come to us and canada for releases? i i don't know that answer well so the the release sprint itself when they sit down and do the release that's in the canonical offices in London. Okay. So they, they do all that in London. I'm not sure if he attends those. No, he wasn't here at Okay. Um, so that's that's where we're at. So any questions about anything Ubuntu 1904? What's the name of the When will the LTS update? So the um the LTS is the, the even number dot oh four releases, but it's 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 based on time. So the twenty oh four release is in April of twenty twenty. Right, correct. Um, so 1904, of course, is, is supported for nine months, and I should, I should mention this as well. Um, all the regular support, regular interim releases, so we're talking 1810, 1904, 1910, the ones between the LTSs, are supported for nine months. 
and that goes for all of the Ubuntu flavors and Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server. However, the LTS releases are supported for um, typically three years by flavors and five years by um, Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server. And then from there, Canonical decides to support some clients for, um, for extended security maintenance. So this will be supported until, what's nine months from now? What is that? January. January, January. yeah. Install the first 1910 alpha and just keep updating it. Is it the same as the final? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah, that was my experience in 1904. Uh -huh. I'm I'm already running the alpha on, on all of my machines personally because I have to dog food my my the thing I'm releasing. But yeah. um, I would not recommend 1910 until at least the beta, if not the final release. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, maybe if you're feeling adventurous on a t on a side machine, but I would not put it in production. Never do that. It, well, it depends. It depends on the cycle too. So, for example, 2004 and 1804, those are going to be LTS releases. So, the developers have in mind that any changes that they introduce are going to have to be supported for the next five plus years. And it's basically bug fixes and polishing. Correct. So, Correct. <laughs> which is why they're usually safe to do. Mm. But again, I well, would do it on both. Still, so your mileage may vary, and I would never. I still don't recommend yeah, yeah. pre-beta yeah. to anyone. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. So, hmm. anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. You mentioned the three years for the, I, I thought most of them are five years. I think Ubuntu Studio was one that was three years, but most of them, like Mate, I hope, is five years, not three, for their LTS version. They, they used to be. Um, they used to be five years until, um, I don't know the, the exact rationale for why it was changed from five to three, but I know that flavors... Um, it's it's much easier if you're if you're a smaller community team because the flavors the people who work on flavors are not hired by Canonical to work on flavors not it hasn't been that way for a, a long time um, so it, with be, with it being a small team it's easier to support something for three years and then because if for example if you support 1604 for five years you already have two additional LTS releases out you have to support 1804 and 2004 at the same time so. Mm -hmm. For a workload for a, a smaller team, I guess, even if the team is a little bit larger, you know, it's, it's mostly a community team. And, and prior to the LTS, all of the leads, the flavors, have to make a firm commitment that they are going to support this in three yep. years. Right. I mean, you, don't, you don't get to participate in an LTS release unless you've signed up on the fact that you've calendared out three years, I'm, I'm going to commit to this. And, and that kind of happened with the Studio with 1804. We opted for not being an LTS release for that. So it ended up being a support lifespan of nine months and technically ended back in January. However, we did make a, a, a backwards PPA for those who wish to continue to support because we have a much stronger team now than we did a year ago. So hmm. we're, we feel comfortable with people keeping it on as long as they have that backwards PPA just yeah. so that we can keep things rolling. Hmm. A lot of so, people don't realize that you actually have to Right, and that's so, that's so the initial one. Used to do five years, mm -hmm. but we had um, one or one and a half paid people. Right. So they, I mean, you can assign somebody to cut work, like you know, doing all those security patches and stuff. But you, how are you going to make volunteer people do that? Because they're it's boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're, you're accepting volunteers for security work? Yes. Oh, I'll sign we're, up right away. We're always accepting volunteers. Come see me after the talk. <laughs> you just poached my person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, 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 
to be might be a little bit of a hurdle, but <laughs> <laughs> that's between me and pottering. So. <laughs> No, we're always we're always accepting volunteers. I mean, whether it's whether it's Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu Mate, we're always we're always accepting new volunteers. And at least in the Ubuntu team, when I started out, I I found that the documentation was lacking, and a lot of the communities seemed to not not any flavor in particular, but it generally was, for lack of a better word, hostile towards noobs. Um, <laughs> so I I made it my mission to if somebody comes in the IRC channel and they have technical competence enough that I know that they will be able to succeed. So they, they aren't asking, why isn't my computer turning on? Um, <laughs> but so, no, 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 but my point is, I make an effort to, to help mentor contributors when we're just starting out. So, you know, whether you think, whether you have the time or whether you would like to, you know, if you want to, if you want to contribute to Ubuntu, it's definitely a worthwhile thing to do. You also have to remember that you don't have to be a developer. Oh, for sure. Right. Absolutely. Filing bug reports. Yeah. When <laughs> I triage. help somebody file a bug report and they finally get through it, I thank them for their contribution. And they're like, what? I thought I was complaining. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're telling us there's a problem. Yeah. And it's helpfully complaining. It's helpfully yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of dovetailing on all of that. I'm the flavor lead for a bunch of studio. I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag. So it's, you don't have to know coding necessarily to get involved. And that's a huge point I think a lot of people miss. But you do have people on the team that do know. That's right. Right. That's right. I mean, well, I mean, this is definitely not a one-man show. Right, for sure. You'd be surprised how many people actually help mentor you or at least point you in the right direction. Like, don't get hung up on what you can't do. Just come talk to someone. You'll be surprised. Like, you'll, you'll give them, like, a little bit of background. They'll probably say, hey, you'll be a perfect fit here. Let's get you going. Here's what I can do. And we'll get you there. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. And, and if you're unsure of, you have some coding knowledge, but you're unsure if it's significant, <laughs> look for bite-sized bugs. Those are always bugs. Well, either way, um, okay. with, with bug triage in general, bug triage is, is simply, okay, when we're, when we're pulling <coughs> a bug, um, a, a good bug is, is reproducible. That's the basic thing, because if you can reproduce the bug, then you can extend the description and, and actually make it a, a worthwhile bug report. If you can reproduce the bug report, and if you're doing bug triage, if you can reproduce something that's already been written, that is extremely helpful because then it shows if there's one bug report that one person reported and nobody marks that in, that it's it's affected as them in Launchpad there's a little a little button you can click then I love that button it's a pencil <laughs> <laughs> it, it affects me too <laughs> yeah it could be an, um, I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily saying it, it it always is but sometimes it is a lower priority than a bug that has 50 people that that are marked as affect them squeaky them. wheels get greased yes true. So. Well, some Just of them are hard to fix and some of them are easy. Yeah, yeah it depends on the bug. Depends how many people get the squeaky wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody have any questions about 1904 either way? Any of the, any of the flavors or any, anything? Uh, Venture Studio is going to get a lot more audio plugins. We are, uh, I've taken it upon myself to work on that because it's uh, one of those things where people feel like they have to add the KX Studio repositories, which uh, we want to try to avoid because it creates a lot of package conflicts. And once you do that, um, next thing you know, you're not really running a bunch of studio, you're running a Franken boom too, really. Uh, so we want to avoid that. Um, and also, uh, we've, we've got refinements to coming to a bunch of studio, con to, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, a bunch of studio controls. So that it can be even more brain dead simple to start running Jack and get that set up with your system. Um, also, uh, more refinements to Ubuntu Studio installer, um, like being able to select specific packages while you're installing it on whatever of its other Ubuntu flavor you're installing on. So there's plenty of things coming. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, can Jack and Pulse coexist? Yes. In fact, we have on Ubuntu Studio controls. A specific checkbox that asks if you want to keep 
the jack, the Pulse audio server running as, and it acts as a separate audio interface in, internally inside the system. Right. The downside is that it does increase some latency just right. because the nature of Pulse audio requires a certain amount of latency. Yeah. Yes. And OSS, right? OSS, uh, we, we, jack interface is directly with ALSA, not really OSS. ALSA. <laughs> so is Pipewire on your on your radar? It is on our radar. Uh, we uh, um, are the brains behind Ubuntu Studio con Controls. His name is Len Ovens. He actually lives on Vancouver Island, so not too far. Yay! from He couldn't make it. Um, but uh, he does. He is keeping his eye on Pipewire uh, as far as the low latency goes, and kind of seeing where it leads. He's also keeping his eye on a number of different technologies that would also be good for uh, music production, especially. Where's ZFS on install? Is that his work? That's a question. That's, that's uh, being deprioritized. It's not going to happen before 2004. So, uh, Challenge accepted well, for Calvary. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Okay. Debate. Mandatory. Anything else? I just mention another way people can get involved, and that's uh, the way I got started in Ubuntu was in 2007, answering support questions. Because I'm not a developer, uh, I, I don't. You should see the code I write. Um, so I don't. I don't consider myself a developer, but I can help answer technical questions, and that's how I got started. And I was doing that for a long time, and then after a while, I got hired by. So now I work for Canonical, partly as a result of the support I've done for users over the years. And one of the best places to get started with that is askubuntu.com. If you go to askubuntu.com, there's a button you can press to show all unanswered questions. And if you have a hint of knowledge of how to solve one of these, you, know, you can fill in a nice detailed description or even something brief and other people can em em embellish it and people upvote your solution if it's uh, successful. That rises up to the top of the uh, search rankings and other people searching for that problem will find a solution. So it's a great way of contributing a small amount of time and potentially impacting hundreds of people, maybe thousands or millions of people. It's a really valuable thing to do supporting your users. Because not everyone is technical like us. Not everyone like you know, normies who wouldn't come to a technical conference like this yeah. need help. And if you have a web browser, and a bit of time, you can point it at Ask Ubuntu and help people out. I've actually got better and faster support on Ask Ubuntu than I ever have on IRC. Sweet! <laughs> good job, keep it up. But IRC is also a good one. I jump in there on occasion too and help people. IRC can get busy with 10,000 people. Oh, it's, there's 1,500 people constantly in there the is, chat rooms. Yeah. There is a flavor uh, channel for every. So if you have a Kubuntu problem, come to hash Kubuntu. Mm -hmm. And sometimes well, I will, work. if it is not really a Kubuntu problem, in other words, it's not a problem with KDE software, it's I will say ball. you probably, I don't know the answer to your question, but you'll probably get it hash Ubuntu because they know. And it's a bigger channel. The IRC, though, if you don't get a response, don't take it personally because sometimes people are just idle. Yeah, or asleep. Yeah. Yeah. And so don't leave. Okay. People leave in like two minutes. I come in five minutes later, start to answer the question, and realize, oh, good. They're gone. And I know the answer. I can't auto complete your IRC <laughs> handle because you're gone. Because you're gone. And the other thing about that is, it's if you don't get a response, it might be that nobody in there knows your answer. The, the only thing yeah. downside with IRC is it's very one. To, it's real time, yeah. but it's one to one, yeah. and nobody ever goes back and looks at those answers yeah. that were given on yeah. IRC. Yeah. 
and they generally don't show up in Google search results or any other search results. That's right. <laughs> but they sh those right. channels should be lost. Right? They logs, but nobody's going to read through 24 hours of IRC log <laughs> to find <laughs> your quality nugget of support. <laughs> <laughs> I would say IRC is good for if you need help right now with something simple. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like a bug. But if a question comes up over and over, that's when we write an FAQ. Yeah. And that's IRC for bug reports. What? And say, this is broken, I want to fix it, here's how to fix it, and then I usually get the, you're ruining the launch pad. Yeah, yeah we need bug reports on launch pad. Hey, Adam, um, you have a like, not I, can, I can fix this now. Like, you know people fix? started giving them in LinkedIn. What? Yeah, what the <laughs> 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 what did you have to say, Adam? Uh, just for new users, they just go to Google. I just wanted to uh, double check that uh, uh, Ask Ubuntu and other things in terms of uh, you know, Google ranking, that essentially what you do is go straight to Google. So I um, just wanted to ask the different maintainers from the different flavors as to what are their rankings in terms of their favorite spots for FAQs and Ask Ubuntu and all the others, uh, whether Stack Exchange. chipset name doesn't work or my Canon bubble jet whatever doesn't work on Ubuntu. If you put like the Canon bubble jet and the bubble name and Ubuntu, you will probably get asked Ubuntu to stop that thing. Yeah, I, I know that I used to. <laughs> it's less it's less often and I, I say it's not for my benefit but for others that I introduce to. So uh, ask Ubuntu is only for generally speaking for all the flavors if it's like foundational stuff. Mm -hmm. If it's specifically about the desktop stuff then visit each of the flavors' websites. They'll have links as to where their community they are. For Ubuntu Mate, we have a discourse instance, and we've added some plugins, so it behave, behaves a lot like um, Stack Exchange. So somebody asks a question, people respond, the best way to get marked as a solution, and that goes, goes up, you know, right underneath the question. This was the question, this was the solution. That's how we do it. Eric? Um. Well, for Ubuntu Studio, uh, pretty much what you're going to have is a lot of the for the foundational questions to ask Ubuntu. It's equally supported, but also for um, for audio issues or if you're having anything like that, we have our IRC chat room. We have Telegram. Um, I'm working on getting Matrix support linked into our IRC chat room. Um, but in terms of anything that's uh, of the desktop environment, which is the, by default XFCE. Um, typically, we would direct you to Zubum too because we are basing all of our stuff off their work. Yeah. But it might have the audio stuff. Yeah, we're absolutely one of our set well as well. What is what yours? Go ahead. Um, I've heard Matrix, Discord, Ask Ubuntu, IRC. Could we all just pick one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Usually, if you Mate, twilled, pick one, they serve different purposes. Sure. But if you use IRC, but usually But if you're saying the first place to go Telegram to get an answer Matrix. is pick one of those four, your noob user's not going to do that. They're not even going to know they all exist. So you use your search engine, and if they read the right one, bubbles up. Yeah, like I don't know how many times I've searched something and I found my answer on Ask Ubuntu. And usually it's a foundational question, so it's relevant to every flavor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think a good thing to tell new people is to get them in the habit of searching for their distro rather than searching for, say, like when I first started, I would search, Linux is doing this thing, and then I'd get like a million irrelevant things, right? Or yeah. they you should go to that maybe doesn't even have yeah. Linux. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I use the ArchWiki. <laughs> Using ArchWiki to solve your Ubuntu problem. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things on there that yes. do yeah. help. I mean, point you in the right direction. Yes. Yeah. Of course. 
What did Ray say? And if you're having a problem with an application, oh, Windows Subsystem Linux, yeah. It's it. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but they get releases alongside Ubuntu Server. If you're having a problem with an application, Google for the application. Yeah. Or ask an IRC. I mean, if you're having a Creta problem, I can't really, I haven't <laughs> used Creta that much, so I will direct you to the Creta IRC. And that also works if you are in Matrix or Telegram. Yeah. So really, IRC is the base old thing. The other stuff plugs into it. Go ahead. Uh, best distro for gaming. Ubuntu. Steam works on all of them. Steam does work on all of them. Isn't Steam OS based on Ubuntu? No, no, it's Debian. Oh, Debian. Is Ubuntu based on Debian? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sisters, Sisters, yeah. Debian Buster is getting released soon. Well, it's sort of our mom. You, I mean, if you make a change, you upload it to Debian, and we can all sync to it. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, as flavors, we're encouraged to do our work in Debian so that it syncs into Ubuntu. I wish so, you were still alive. Although I'm working on Ubuntu flavor, I would so say nine tenths of the work I do is actually in Debian. Yeah, one uh, one thing I noticed in 1904, uh, I think it's prepared for Debian's uh, deprecation of Q4, is that it's actually running a development version of Mumble because the current yep. stable version is on Q4, whereas the development version is on Q5. I mean, it would help if they would actually do a release and you not would. wait yeah. <laughs> not wait several years. I mean, it's it's been several years and they they've oh, had it. Yeah. And I can I can empathize with the developers, of course. Mm -hmm. Don't release it before it's ready. Right. Mumble it, will leak your public IP address. I have told them that four years ago. They still haven't patched. I don't I don't know what to tell you with that. Just file a bug. <laughs> <laughs> or help out the mumble team. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Amarok is still on Q4. Must be Q4. Yeah, that was re removed from yeah. uh, from 1904. And they have almost. Everything done, but they're not ready to release. So, mm -hmm. we didn't ship it. Anything else for anyone? Go ahead. Well, uh, this is not a question, but um, I, I, I'm not in the IT uh, business. Um, I actually work as an interpreter, and um, I just happen to use Linux. And I've been using Debian for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm here because a lot of the time, you know, I tell my friends, oh, Linux is great, right? But there's still this stigma that. Linux is hard. So I tell them, oh, but there is Ubuntu that it's user friendly and all that, but I haven't used it myself. So I'm, I'm thinking about switching to Ubuntu and, uh, you know, it was interesting in seeing what, what's new. And uh, what I have read a lot about the, the latest release is the performance, right? And mm -hmm. that's what, uh, what everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the usability, uh, how would you qualify the usability? from zero to 10, if you compare it to, I don't know, the other operating systems out there? That's a really good question that I don't know if I have the answer to. Um, I don't know if I can give it a, um, a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, 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 Well, right. If right. you ask an Arch person, they'll say Arch. If you ask a Mam Gerald person, they'll say Mam Gerald. Uh, with, the, uh, with the arch cable, you only have to mention it, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many dimensions to what that word usability means. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I know, but like, I, I'm always like, well, why do I tell them? This is, this is what it is. It's kind of like, even uh, a friend that uh, works for Amazon mm -hmm. uh, is, says, like, oh, this is too hard. There, there's always this reluctancy to try something because uh, there's still that stigma that is hard. How would you change that? 
do you have to? I you always know? tell them, try the live session. Yeah. Try the live session. Does your wireless work? Does your printer work? Yeah, well, they but, but you but could get a live, seat, a live USB, I'd say, would be the, yep. the, the best USB. answer. And we have, we have ISOs at the Ubuntu booth. If, if anyone would like a live ISO or, or just want to try Ubuntu or any of the flavors, we have all the images there. Yes? Uh, quickest way to get a live USB with multiple distros online so you can try it out. What's the quickest way to get it? If I want to try Monday, I want to try uh, Bunchy, oh, you do I want to try I have to. <laughs> this is a multi ISO booting hard drive enclosure. It's the IOT, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They are awesome. They are a very awesome. Virtual totally. CD emulator. Yeah, it's a CD emulator. You can put, uh, uh, it sadly only works with NTFS or Pathfinder. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a set of that. However, it works flawlessly. Yeah, yeah. I, I have one um, that does. Uh, it treats, all you have to do is mount it on here and it will treat it as if you've got a, a virtual CD. Yeah, it's a CD DVD emulator. Yep. As far as the bias is How concerned. much are they? About, uh, let's see, this particular model, which has the hardware encryption and everything, is about $80. You can get the cheaper version for $50. And what's the difference? Storage space? Uh, uh, no, not storage space. It's just a uh, because it's oh, 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 sorry, you put in whatever SD yeah. yeah. you, you want. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt the discussion, um, but we are 10 minutes over time. So thanks, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Yeah.